Now, it's absolutely no secret. My launcher of choice is D menu because D menu is simple to use, it's lightweight, it does basically everything a launcher needs to do, and I've just been using it for, I think, two or so years at this point, but Rofi would be a pretty good choice as well. However, if you're coming from a graphical environment, maybe you prefer something a bit more graphical than D-Menu is, and that's where something like SGTK comes in, which is what we're looking at today. So, as the name would suggest, SGTK is a GTK launcher. Now, the reason why this was made was because at the time, the developer couldn't actually find any decent graphical launchers that work consistently under Sway and under X. But GTK works basically the same under both of them, and that's why he went with that. So, SGTK isn't just a single application, it's actually four different binaries. We have SGTK menu, we have bar, D menu, and grid. And all of these behave in very, very different ways. But the nice thing about this being a GTK application is that just by installing and running this, assuming you have your GTK theme set up properly, it's going to integrate with the rest of your system with literally no effort. So this is how mine's gonna look, but depending on the theme that you're running, it's gonna look considerably different. And this is the SGTK menu. This is the one we're gonna start on. If you go and try something like say D menu or Rofi, it's gonna take considerably more time to actually get it to look nice on your system. But if you do want to go and override the style sheet being used, all of the different binaries do actually support a dash CSS option. So SGTK, dash menu, dash CSS, and then you can go and pass in a CSS style sheet to go and style it the way that you want. And SGTK, even though it's a GTK application, isn't designed with GNOME in mind. It's completely desktop independent, so you're not going to download a bunch of dependencies you don't want. SGTK menu is very reminiscent of the open with menus you'll see in a lot of GUI file managers, and it works in basically the same way as well. So if I search for something I know I have installed like ST, for example, you'll notice it's not actually here, but if I search for like Alacrity instead, Alacrity is. Now, the reason why it's like this is because ST is missing its .desktop entry, and there's a lot of GUI applications out there where the devs either don't know this is a thing or just don't bother to actually implement it, and when the .desktop entry is missing, things like this won't work. And the same is going to be true with things like the GNOME grid sort of thingy. If it doesn't have a .desktop entry, it won't appear in that either. But luckily, you can actually go and make these yourself, and one useful thing you might want to go and do is let's say you want to open up your terminal file manager But have it open up from this menu Obviously a terminal application isn't going to have a dot desktop entry But what you can do is make a dot desktop entry that assigns opening up that application Inside of your terminal and that can actually appear in this list now There's a couple of options you may care about some of those being the dash f option and the dash fn option So dash f what that's going to do is is show your five most frequently opened up applications right up the top. So say you frequently open up your terminal and, I don't know, your web browser. Instead of having to go and search for them or dig through this list, they'll always be right here for you to click. But if you want to have a different number besides five, you do it with the dash FN option. And let's say you only want the two most frequent applications there. That's how you're going to go and do that. I don't think those should be separate options. They should probably just be merged together. Now, another interesting one is attaching an appendix. So let's try that again, but this time pass in the dash A option. So what we have here is a little reload button down here. So the appendix is a separate file you go and define, and you can basically include a bunch of buttons you want to have that have various actions defined to them. And if you just want to show the appendix and nothing else, you include the dash N option, and that just won't show the rest of the menu. So the way you go and define the appendix is actually fairly simple. So let's go into my config directory and go down to SGTK. So in here, we have a couple of appendix files. The default one it's going to use is just called appendix. So in here, we have a JSON file, and we define a name for the command. So in that case, I was using reload. We define a command to be executed. In this case, all it was going to do was restart awesome WM, and then you can assign a GTK icon. And the icon I chose to use was reload, but it seems like my theme is missing that icon. So let's go and add something new in here. Let's go and just, we'll have it with the exact same command, but let's call it something different. So include a comma here, and let's call it, I don't know, command 2, because I'm very exciting like that. So let's go and run 
sgtk dash menu and let's just run it with the dash n option and now we actually have two commands in here we have reload and command two and a lot of the other options are just reused across the other binaries so doing things like say sgtk dash menu dash y is going to let you change the y offset so that's the y location on the screen let's say we want it to be at i don't know 100 so that's going to move it 100 pixels lower than it was before but there's other things like being able to force a specific language so if we pass in the dash l option and then we pass in de that's going to make it run in german and obviously I have no idea how to read any of this, but we can also do things like change the icon size as well. So let's say we want the icons to be uh, 64, for example, and that's gonna be much, much larger than they were before. Or you could change where the menu is gonna spawn. So instead of having it in the top left-hand corner, you can go and put it down the bottom, for example, with the dash B option for bottom. And as you can see, bottom left-hand corner now, or we can go and put it in the center with the C option, and now it's gonna spawn in the center of the screen. Personally, I think it makes more sense for it to be in the top left here. One weird thing is I don't believe there's actually a way to move it along the x-axis. So I tried to look for an option and unless I'm completely blind, there doesn't seem to be an x offset here. If I'm missing it, let me know. Now, even though this is desktop independent, there are a couple of options that do rely on i3 or Sway because those options rely on the APIs for those window managers. So things like menu delay in milliseconds and overlay opacity. So luckily it's nothing really that important, but if you do want to use these, then you will have to be using one of those window managers. Now, moving on from the regular menu, we have the D menu. Now, as the name would suggest, it works basically the same way the D menu works. However, it doesn't really sort stuff anywhere near as nicely. So if I search for something like ST, it's not actually going to be at the top because it's going to do things by alphabetical order. So if I want to go and find ST, I've got to scroll all the way down to the S section this isn't really a problem in cases where you have applications that are named fairly uniquely, but if it's something like this, which is just a couple of letters, it's very likely that those letters have been used in something earlier in the alphabet and just won't show up where it needs to. So while this is cool and you can go and use it like D menu, if you just want to use this functionality, my suggestion would be just go and download D menu, go and download Rofi, even just go and download like FCF and do it in your terminal because this isn't really the best implementation for this. There's ways it could definitely be improved and there's some options that could be added like actually ordering by most relevant search and things like that which would be very very useful to have but as it stands, I wouldn't recommend this functionality. Next up, we have SGTK bar. Now, I'm well aware you can do something very similar with Rofi, but it is cool that this is here. So basically, it's a little bar that you can have any sort of functionality you want in here. Now, I know things are repeated, but that's because it's defined in basically the same way the appendix is, and I was sort of lazy when I was writing the file. So let's go over to that. So that's down in SGTK. And if we go to exit, that's what the bar is. So you can go and define basically any commands you want in here. So let's go and change this one over to being alacrity. And what this is going to do is basically just spawn alacrity. And now we have one called alacrity in here. If I click on this, it should go and launch alacrity. Most of the options for this one are fairly aesthetic. So doing things like say, sgtk dash bar dash p for doing the padding or the dash bw option for changing the button width bh for changing the button height but one that actually is really useful is the bf option because this will let you change which file to actually build the bar from so instead of using the one that we had before let's instead go and swap it over to one of the other files so dot config slash sgtk and then what files were in here let's go the exit i3 and as we'll see now we have different buttons here now do you really like the gnome launch grid but just don't have any interest at all in running gnome well luckily for you we have sgtk grid which basically is the gnome launch grid now i know someone who uses gnome is going to say oh but this part of it's missing or this part of it's missing it has what you're basically going to need. So you can go and move around this with your arrow keys. If you start typing, it's going to do type the search. You don't actually have to go and click up here. So let's say I type 
Alacrity. It's going to start searching for that. I can open it with Enter, and there we go. It does basically what you need an app grid to actually do. Personally, I've never been that much of a fan of the way that GNOME does it, but I can imagine that being something you might miss if you do go and leave that desktop environment. And all of the generic options from earlier apply, so doing things like, say, having some favorites at the top, we can do SGTK grid dash F, and we'll see a couple of favorite applications right here. And the favorite applications are actually going to be shared between all of SGTK. They're not independent lists for each of the applications. But you can also do things like set the language, you can set the icon size, you can set the opacity. All of that same stuff works with the exact same options. Now, I know someone's probably going to mention this. Because I'm using Awesome WM, I'm well aware that there are probably plugins to actually do a lot of this stuff natively in Awesome WM. I wanted to cover for this application though because not everyone who watches my channel is using Awesome WM and this might be something they want to use. And I'm also aware you can do this with Rofi. Personally, if I was going to do this myself, I probably would do that. But if you're just too lazy to go and configure Rofi and you just want something that works basically as well as you could want it to work, this is going to basically do the job. So if you're running Arch Linux, you can go and get this from the AUR. On a couple of other distros like Fedora, it is packaged, but there's not really that many options for it. So if you're using something else, you're probably going to have to go and build it from source. And it is a Python application, so it may not be the fastest thing out there, but I haven't really noticed any terrible performance losses because of the language. While this isn't the sort of application I would normally use, I can definitely see why some people might want it. And if you're that sort of person, let me know what you're actually going to use it for down in the comment section below. Also, there'll be links to all of this stuff like the GitHub and all of that down below as well. So if you want to go and download the application, go and check that out. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Wondry, Nathan, David, Monster, Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter Lee, Stephen, Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support work, the links down below in the description for all that stuff. I've got my podcast down there, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere you can listen to a podcast. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute. If you want to watch my channel on a platform that isn't YouTube, I forgot how I end that. Also, I do gaming stuff m most weeks on the weekend. That happens on Brody Robertson Plays. Really long name. I will deal with it at some point. So, I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. And I'm out.